Okay, I'm going to show you all today the process of putting my new Atari 2600 game on a cartridge so that I can play it on real hardware. Um, I have my game loaded up here. Um, it's been compiled. Uh, I have a binary file that's ready to go. It's 8K. So what I need to do now is go over here into my junk drawer and find the EEPROM burner which is right here and I think I've got all the parts that I need close that back up open up the EEPROM burner set this down for a second okay so now I have my EEPROM burner out of the package. Looks like this. There's no case on it. I'm going to hook it up to my workstation. We've got uh, USB for power. This is a little difficult to do with one hand. Okay, light came on, it's got power, and now I need to plug in the parallel cable, okay, looks good. Okay. Lights are on. Now the next step is to go into my other junk drawer and find an EEPROM of which I have many. And let's see what we have here. Um, that one is a 64, I'm sorry, that's an 8K EEPROM, so we can use that. Take that out. Looks just like that. And then I'm going to put it into the slot on the programmer. Push down the latch, now it's locked in place. And then I'm going to start up my EEPROM software, yes, allow, and it's already set up because I did a test run earlier, so it's set up for a 2764 EEPROM, which is the 8K EEPROM that I just put in. Um, normally I would have to flip all these dip switches to get it to match what's on this red uh, dip switch panel here, but again, I already set those up, uh, so then what I will do is I will open my binary file. There is Atomic Disco version 5 binary. Open that. And binary file loaded OK. So now what I can do is... Um, oh, I should probably test to make sure this chip is blank first. So I'm going to run the blank test. Device is not empty. Uh-oh. I need another one. So I'm going to take this out. Let's try a different one here. You have to make sure that the little notch is pointed upwards when you insert it into the slot. Otherwise, it can burn out the EEPROM. So that's inserted. Let's try again. Let's try the blank test. Device is empty. Okay, that's the good one. All right. So I put this other one back in here. And we have the game loaded. We have a blank EEPROM. Now what we can do is program. 
and then we wait. Device programmed okay, and it went through the verification process. So this chip has been written. And in case you're not familiar with EEPROMs, they have this window in the top where you can erase it and use it again. Um, I have a separate device called an EEPROM eraser, which just blasts that with ultraviolet light. And after about an hour, uh, it erases the chip. And so this is old technology. Um, nowadays, they have what's called electrically erasable uh, PROMs, programmable read-only memory. So um, you can just send a certain signal to the chip and it'll erase itself. Um, this is the old school way to do it. Um, but now that I have my chip, I can go back over here and I have cartridges. In case you ever wondered what exactly is inside an Atari cartridge, I'm about to show you. What's inside an Atari cartridge is this. Those are the pins at the bottom. That's what makes contact with the board. Um, mine has uh, a socket soldered in because I want to be able to insert and remove these chips. These are for testing. Um, so mine has this socket. Normally you would solder the um, the ROM chips directly to the board if you were making final cartridges, but this is just a test. So now what I'm going to do is take my EEPROM out. I'm going to put it over the slot and I'm going to push it down. good. Make sure it's seated correctly. And yeah, everything looks good. So that's pretty much it. Now what I could do is if I had a cartridge shell, the plastic case that goes around, um, I could put this into one of those. I don't have any empty shells right now and it'll work just fine. I can put this into the, into the 2600. It doesn't look pretty. Uh, but we're just testing right now, and this will play on real hardware too without the cartridge shell. Um, this this particular board also, since it has that um, socket soldered in there, uh, it makes it too large to fit into a shell, into a standard shell without modifying one, but this will work just fine. I'll just try this out. So I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to go upstairs and try it out. Okay, I'm upstairs. I'm getting ready to try out my new Atari 2600 game. I don't actually have a 2600 hooked up right now, but I do have a 7800, which will play all of the 2600 games, as well as the 7800 games. So here's my cartridge. Put that in there like so. Turn on the television. And then... Push power, and there it is. I'll start up a game here. I won't be able to play this uh, without both hands, but yeah, there we go. It works. So it's not as exciting with only one player, and I'm not really doing very well just moving it up and down, but... Uh, yeah, you can see it's uh it's functioning and now I have a cart. So thanks for watching.